electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. It's the 31st of May. I'm slightly ahead of time. I'm starting to work on the end of month energy update video. Looking through Home Assistant, which is the system that I bring all of my data from all of my apps and uh, energy devices in the house, bring them into one place so I can see everything and control everything in one place, which is really, really good. And anyway, what I'm doing today while I'm looking through all the data is looking for exceptions, looking for the story, if there is one, to tell for the month. You know, what's been high what's been low what records have been broken and it's really interesting to see what's going on um, for example today um, we've only got 1.7 kilowatts of solar coming through at the moment the last couple of days of may have been really low with generation yesterday was just 17 kilowatt hours today looks like it might even be less it's uh, 12 o'clock at the moment and we've had 5.4 kilowatt hours of solar energy so far good news only nine watt hours of um, import that's nine one thousandths of a kilowatt hour but we have exported half a kilowatt hour roughly so you can see that our, our system is well balanced to export more uh, we're currently exporting 80 watts back out to the grid um, but while it's exporting it can't be importing so that's why the import is so low i don't mind some of the energy slipping back out Anyway, our home storage battery is pretty much full. 92% is almost full. The volts for maximum are offset to 51.8 volts at the moment. So um, we're only ever filling up to about 93%. The month of May has been an interesting one because it's all basically the story is about temperature. It's been a colder month than normal. Um, just the other day at the end of May, it was five degrees in the morning. It was blooming cold. So... Um, it's cold outside, but the house has been warmed up from sunshine previously for the previous few weeks. The house is retaining the heat, so we're not actually needing the main heating system on. If you look at this chart on Home Assistant, aircon watts is showing at 0, 0.0. I've actually turned it off physically at the isolator switch. So uh, no heating on in the house. Well, I say that, no main heating system. The good thing about this system that I've got, which is um, all in bits and pieces and different uh, heaters for different rooms sort of thing, these three yellow icons you can see, infrared, cloakroom and ensuite, those are three independent heaters for our ensuite and cloakroom. So those I do have on at the moment. There's enough solar with 1.7 kilowatts to have some heating on. I do like our bathrooms warm. So when there's a slight chill to the house it's not quite ready for the entire heating system to come on i can turn on just our bathrooms without the rest of the heating system being on that flexibility and modular way of having our heating system is really working for us now it doesn't work for everyone some people like to be able to turn the heating on and the whole house gets to the same temperature um, each to their own I'm finding that by having separate rooms controlled by separate systems, the wet rooms especially, it works really well for us. Um, as I'm turning the heating off, I'm not quite ready to turn it all off. I'd like some left on, and that's the bathrooms particularly. Anyway, uh, so the story really has been in May that we've had plenty of solar generation. It's May after all. Just for a change, I'll show you the solar generation from a Victron point of view. This is the Victron inverter that looks after our Pylon Tech batteries. We generated 1,099 kilowatt hours. We used 491 kilowatt hours for the Eddy, Zappi and the house, etc. We exported 480 kilowatt hours of that generation and we put 128 kilowatt hours of it into the Pylon Tech batteries themselves. This is the chart that shows the comparison to previous Mays and the breakdown per array. We've got three arrays. The 3.9 kilowatt Solis array generated 555.5 kilowatt hours. That's actually the second highest out of the five years we've had solar. The solar edge inverter that we have, which is a two kilowatt inverter with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, 314 kilowatt hours. Again, that's the second highest we've had. And the last array, which is partly east facing gable solar panels and three panels on my garage roof. That's another solace inverter, a 2.5 kilowatt inverter, and that generated just 229.5 kilowatt hours. But in total, that's 1.099 megawatt hours. Sounds good, doesn't it? And out of that 1,099 kilowatt hours we generated, 480 of them went back out to the grid. Sort of good, sort of not so good. 480 kilowatt hours is a lot, but it's not as much as other previous April and Mays in the past, as you can see from this chart. So it's not too bad, and it also provides a potential income for the future on export payments. 
house usage is down because we haven't had the heating on and it hasn't been warm enough to have the air conditioning on so our house usage is low um, everything else just seems normal I, ha I haven't had to worry about anything there's been enough solar energy that I've switched off from trying to save energy with a hot water heating um, we've had plenty of energy to charge our electric cars apart from the last couple of days I'm I'm trying to charge the golf up ready for the weekend at the moment but we've had two days in a row where it's been dull and overcast and haven't had any energy going in but tomorrow looks like it's going to be a good enough day to be able to get the job done so I'm not concerned about it this charts from the my energy app and it shows 303.2 kilowatt hours for May on house usage that's a full hundred kilowatt hours less than last month so again it's low usage this month 236 kilowatt hours went into the Zappi to charge our electric cars and just 90.7 kilowatt hours went via the eddy into our Mixergy hot water tank. So it has been very relaxed powering from just solar energy and I, I do like it when we become I wouldn't say independent from the grid and we haven't switched the grid off etc we're not really working off grid but we're not charging anything overnight we're still on the Octopus Go tariff where it's um we're paying seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour overnight between 2.30 in the morning and 6.30 in the morning for four hours. And then it's 40 pence a kilowatt hour thereafter. So we're not using any of the cheap rate at all because we don't need to charge anything up overnight. Everything that we're charging is being charged from solar energy during the day. So the kilowatt hours we're importing are all at peak time at the expensive rate. But it's just a tenth of a kilowatt hour and a tenth of a kilowatt there. All those tenths add up though, and in total for the month, 3.82 kilowatt hours imported. Yep, a really, really tiny amount. And if you look at the chart there, you can see that there was a couple of days around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kilowatt hours, and one day at 0.8 kilowatt hours. Those are mostly the days we're charging on the Zappi and this cloud going past, and that's where it occurs. But most of the days, under a tenth. A lot of days there are like 20, 30, 40 watt hours for the day. So yep, just 3.82 kilowatt hours. And that equates to just 13 pounds and 14 pence on the go tariff. So we've had a really cheap energy month. And if we'd have been on the agile tariff, I keep an eye on that. It would have been 15 pounds, 61 pence. So not a huge difference between the two. Again, if you look at the averages at the top left, on the Agile tariff, the Agile was just 19 pence a kilowatt hour. On Go, because I'm burning energy at the peak rate, 38.51 pence is the average we paid. And whilst we're talking about different tariffs like Octopus and Go, it's worth mentioning that I do consider what tariff to be on because of the export that I'm doing as well. So I might go on to the Octopus Agile tariff, the Intelligent tariff or the Flux tariff all from Octopus Energy. Yes, there are other energy companies, but it's worth saying that one of the things I really like about being with Octopus is that I don't feel like I need to change. I don't need to change energy company because they offer lots of products and lots of options, and they're all smart. So once I'm on my smart meter, once I'm saving money, it's just a case of working out what's best for me. I honestly can't remember the last time I considered moving to another energy company because there's plenty of good things about Octopus. I've got no reason to change. The price is all right. The products they offer are the smartest out there. The customer service is great. There's no reason for me to look at another energy company. All my flexibility and options are available with Octopus. So yeah, I still recommend them. I still think they're the best company to go with. And it's 100% renewable energy. Thank you so much for all those people using my referral code. Um, I've had several this month. Um, and that's going to mean... I don't have to pay an electricity bill for quite a few more months. So thank you so much for that. That really is a help and it helps um, do these videos as well. Um, the small amount of income that we get from these videos on YouTube, which is reducing dramatically right now. YouTube is going through some sort of change where subscribers are now coming on really, really slowly. The income revenue from YouTube is it's about a half of what it used to be. Um, so those people that are trying to do this for a living um, must be struggling a little bit more unless of course they've got loads and loads of subscribers etc but uh, for me thankfully i only do this as a hobby so um, the fact that it makes a little bit of money is very nice the fact that some of you are using my referral code that's really good as well and does make a big difference so thank you thank you for using that referral code for those people that have this month 
In one of my last videos, I told you about a couple of things that we're doing. We're trying to change our kitchen, bathroom, and build an outside studio, an outside room. And uh, the outside room is going nowhere. I cannot get quotes. I cannot get even the uh, the base laid to be able to start building on. So that's going really, really slowly. Kitchen's progressing nicely. I'm looking at uh, all of the units now, all of the uh, ovens, the washing machine, the fridge. All of those things are going to be changed. Um, hopefully I can find a home for the old ones though, because they're actually all still working. So it'll be a shame to um, just put those out to the tip. So I'm hoping they do go to a home that will benefit from having some decent devices that are still working. Another good thing that's been happening this month, I'm actually trying and testing two different products that you'll see two videos coming up in the month of June from me. And these products are being tested. I always look for products that I'm happy to test and try that may be of interest to you on the channel and most of them are energy related ones and uh, one of them is actually a mobile phone this month which just seems wow you know what on earth am I doing testing a mobile phone but this one has a bit of a story to it because I've been chasing the company for about a year now trying to get one to test because it has a night camera and a thermal imaging camera as standard on it. So a mobile phone with a thermal imaging camera without having to buy an add-on, etc. So I'm really looking forward to presenting that to you because I, I can't believe how good the phone is. Um, I thought I was just going to test it, think the camera is great, and then revert back to my old one. But um, I haven't put this new phone down. It is absolutely brilliant in every respect compared to my old phone. So I can't wait to tell you about that because of the thermal imaging capability but uh, obviously I'm enjoying having a new smartphone as well. The other thing I'm testing is an EcoFlow product. They've sent me a new Delta 2 battery with the PowerStream balcony and microinverter system. So this is I think revolutionary for the UK. It's a DIY install battery, solar and inverter system. You plug it in yourself. So um, it can have 800 watts of solar panels. Um, the battery that I've got is a one kilowatt hour solution, but you can have over 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage with these EcoFlow devices. So for those people that aren't putting fixed installations on the roof and want a DIY install, a portable solution themselves, this one from EcoFlow is going to be really, really interesting. So I can't wait to share that video with you as well. For me, this month, in my testing of that, what it's meant is I've got this one kilowatt hour battery that I've been discharging throughout the night, and that's been picking up most of my base load. So our battery usage has been a bit lower than usual. Um, we haven't discharged it very much at all. And uh, that's been really, really helpful, having that little addition and uh, covering the overnight load. Because if I'm not discharging the Pylontech batteries with our Victron solution during the night, then I haven't got to recharge them much during the day. And if I'm not recharging them much during the day, then there isn't as much contention for the energy. So I get less grid import as well. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good fun testing that, but uh, hasn't made a huge difference on the stats. This is the Victron summary chart that's showing battery usage. It's got uh, the depth of discharge being shown in blue at the top. If it reaches the very top of the graph using the right hand scale, the battery is charged to 100%. And as you can see, we haven't been charging to 100%. I've been keeping that voltage lower. And the lower the blue section comes, the wider the blue section becomes, the more we're discharging the battery. And again, as you can see from the chart, it's really, really thin. We haven't been discharging it very much at all. 88 kilowatt hours in total for the month and if we kept using this EcoFlow battery you can see how thin it is towards the end of the month that's when I've been testing it if that was all the way through the month it would be much much lower and lastly this is the chart from Home Assistant that shows the independent energy devices that are monitoring starting at the top the most the Zappi on solar 236 kilowatt hours yep that's the same as what I've told you about the Eddy solar 90.9 kilowatt hours the oven and hob, 22 kilowatt hours. The Chibri air conditioning, it was on just a little bit this month, 21.65 kilowatt hours. You can really start to see how small all of these uh, items are now. The ensuite radiator at 18.65 kilowatt hours. The internet hub, so just our internet router and the My Energy hub, what's that? 15.1 kilowatt hours. And what else have we got on there? The TV, another 15 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom, 13 kilowatt hours. The air fryer, these are getting hard to click on now, 7 kilowatt hours. And uh, yeah, the last one, the microwave. No, I can't see what that is. It's small, whatever it is. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope there were some stats there that uh, you found useful. 
One of the things that I might do in the future, especially if you say that you'd be interested, my brother's just installed a Give Energy hybrid solution. I think it's a 8 or 8.2 kilowatt solar array on an east-west uh, orientation, and he's got a Give Energy 9 point something kilowatt hour battery. He's getting some great results from that, very comparable to my own system. So I'm, I'm a little bit jealous that he's been able to do it in one go, one install, and getting some really great results. It'd be good to see that comparison between systems so i might present that with his approval as well coming up soon anyway take care more videos to come soon especially those two product reviews watch out for those this uh, smartphone that i've reviewed with the thermal imaging camera is absolutely stunning i, I can't believe how good it is i think i'm going to get one of these for uh, susan as well especially with how robust it is she keeps dropping hers and breaking the screen anyway mobile phone review coming soon one that's actually relevant with the thermal imaging camera and also the ecoflow power stream product with balcony solar that you've just got to see because in the uk we don't think those things are possible and to see a diy installed battery microinverter and solar panels and that you can install it yourself I think that's a bit of a game changer for the UK, for people that can't do fixed roof installs or don't want to, but would like to dip their toe into the water of um, saving some grid energy and uh, using your own energy, especially at peak times. Perfect solution to be able to do it yourself. So I look forward to sharing you that system soon. In fact, I think that's due to come out on the 7th of June, so watch out for that one. Take care, see you again soon. Lots of more interesting videos and interesting stats. Hope you're enjoying all the sunshine and hope the weather keeps improving. And uh, yeah, it won't be long, air conditioning will be on. And those people that have gone air to air will be rejoicing having air conditioning in the house for free. Take care, see you again soon. Bye for now.